Do you see that circle right there? That is a 50 day moving average crossing above the 200 day moving average on the daily chart. And it's a big deal. It's a bullish move. Wait till you see the last two times that happened on this XRP chart. We're also going to look at the weekly chart zoomed out. We're going to talk about a $2 price target and a $5 target, or I should say prediction. And we're really going to talk about the structure that has formed on XRP over the years. Incredibly intriguing when compared to the rest of crypto. And we have the Ripple SEC case going on right now. And the way that that story plays into this chart in this bear market, I think is incredibly powerful. It doesn't matter if you're an XRP holder or not. This case is important. It's time to pay attention. It really is time to pay attention. Ripple and SEC court war, what to expect in the coming weeks. Initial reactions in the XRP community say that the SEC's arguments are once again very weak. Jeremy Hogan, a popular advocate from the XRP community, stated via Twitter, I was surprised how weak the SEC was on the post-sale obligation issue. I feel like I must be missing something. This is something I've just been seeing. And I, I follow people like Jeremy Hogan, who's an attorney, because they know what's up. They know how to explain these things. The whole, everything legally that's going on with this case, it's way outside my, my knowledge, right? So I'm trying to retain it. I'm trying to pick it up as things go. I'm learning so much. These guys make it really easy in order to do that. But one thing I've noticed in the narrative is kind of, I've seen Ripple going from this kind of very much in defense to more of like, more of like a power position. And that's something interesting, especially as we start getting to the later stage of this entire case, this multi-year case. And it could be a, a really, really powerful, powerful thing. So here's Jeremy over here on Twitter. The SEC fails to adequately address the post-loss obligation argument as raised by Ripple. And he goes on, he says, game-changing argument by Ripple. And so I want to show you a quick clip uh, of Jeremy on YouTube just yesterday. Check it out. So... You could say that Garlinghouse's tweet was a declaration of war, and declarations of war, as history tell us, tells us, are always made from places of strength. Places of strength. By the way, note that, that title. I just like how he put that there. We are almost there. So he's referring to Brad Garlinghouse's tweets, and this was October 20th. The SEC wants you to think that it cares about disclosure, transparency, and clarity. Don't believe them. When the truth eventually comes out, the shamefulness of their behavior here will shock you. So it's kind of like, how do you come from a place of strength? How, how could Brad come from a, pra a place of strength, a place of confidence to say something like that, right? Things must be going pretty decent behind the scenes in order to do that. And I think that's what Jeremy was alluding to. Now, all of this, everything going on, which we're tracking and we're learning about, at least I'm learning a lot, all kind of revolves and plays into this story. And this is a story I think that a lot of us are really interested. It's XRP price. It's, it's XRP kind of as this long-term opportunity. What, where's it going? What, what's going to happen? And you see a lot of speculation out there. Can Ripple, this headline says, hit $5 following a potential lawsuit win? A lawsuit, a lawsuit win will be huge for, for XRP. It'll be huge for crypto. It'll be a very good thing. I just want to note kind of like this be careful type of warning. Be careful. We're in the middle of a bear market, right? We have to continue tracking equity markets. We have to con continue tracking what the Fed is doing and, and interest rate hikes and, and how this news is being released and how sentiment is reacting to that. We have to continue tracking those things. But needless to say, guess what? This is happening. Bear market or not, this, this case is happening. And what if there was a positive outcome in the middle of a bear market. Such an interesting thing to track and kind of kind of bring some cool, exciting energy into the bear market as things kind of just fizzle out or trade sideways. XRP continues to dominate headlines as the top 10 ranked project battles, the SEC to vindicate itself and the entire industry. We're going to look at some price points here, but real quick for context, how the financial payments giant is involved in a lawsuit with SEC. We know this. However, it currently has the upper hand. Experts believe a potential lawsuit win could have long-term bullish implications for the entire industry and help XRP hit $5 following the outcome. We're going to look at $5 on the chart right now, what it would take to get there, what that looks like for XRP. And you have other price points also in this very article, right? Well past $1 in the weeks following a positive result or $3.84, the all-time high of XRP. So a lot of speculation out there. Once again, I remind you, just be careful. Nobody knows what's going to happen, right? 
This right here, not financial advice. This is, this is my view. This is how I'm seeing things. And this is what I want to share with you. Here's XRP on the weekly chart. The structure here, you have 2018 high, you have a 2020 low, and you have kind of just in this median range right now, through it all, not only just the market cycles, but through this case with the SEC, that, that number one is so interesting to me. And the structure that's forming for me, from what I see and the way I read charts, and this is just me, is very much a symmetrical triangle. It's not the prettiest, right? There's a lot of space here, obviously, but we have this upper trend line, second touch, we have one, two, three touches to the bottom, right? And we have a lot of room for another touch to the upper trend line. So this structure for me, and we also have all the way back here, 2017, the beginning of the lower trend line. So this structure for me is very much a symmetrical triangle. It actually kind of reminds me of a symmetrical triangle, the macro we, we tracked on Bitcoin. And so when we're looking at the macro and we're looking at everything that's in play for XRP, I think this really acts as a nice roadmap for all these price speculations. And then we just sprinkle in some very easy data to get a hold of. And we start, I think, seeing what's realistic, at least from my view. This is what I think is realistic. So here we are, XRP in this macro long-term story in this SEC case at the bottom of this trend line area, let's say things go great. And obviously this isn't going to happen now, but we can take the current price point to speculate Things go great for, for XRP and things go great for Ripple. XRP price does what everybody's thinking it could do, right? It just starts going up. Well, just for reference to the upper trend line of this formation, not even breaking all-time highs or anything like that, we're like $1.50. That's 200% plus gains. I think that's very realistic in an environment where XRP is moving to the upside. Now, take those gains and increase it to a hundred billion dollar market cap and then we'll be looking at right around two dollars two dollars xrp is a hundred billion dollar market cap over 300 percent gains 330 some percent gains increase that to around five dollars which was a price prediction that many people are saying that's almost a thousand percent gains it's a 250 billion dollar market cap now i want to stop right there and i just want to kind of interject my opinion I don't think that's happening right now in the middle of this bear market, even off the back of ridiculously good news. It's definitely in the macro and the long term, in my opinion, extremely realistic for XRP to hit a $250 billion market cap. But let's, let's kind of like set, set the stage and, and get realistic. And, and if to do that, all we can do is a couple of things. We go back, we look at all time high, 100, right around $120 billion market cap. Okay. So we're talking about doubling that in the middle of this bear market. But not only that, if you go over here, Bitcoin right now alone is at 371 billion, right? So XRP at 250 billion would put it right in between Bitcoin where it is and Ethereum at 165. I don't think that's gonna necessarily happen in the immediate short to midterm, even off the back of really good news. But I digress from that and I say, I really think this $2 area right around $100 billion market cap, maybe up to 120, the all-time high. I really think that's realistic. And that would be an incredibly powerful move, 300% plus move for XRP in a bear market. I think that's, that's really generous of an opinion. Now, if we look at that, that plays into this entire structure, meaning we'd have XRP kind of cruising now to, to the upper trend line of this triangle breaking out no matter like whenever it happened right i don't know when it would happen right now we're all the way back here in october but if it happens this is extremely speculative how i'm drawing it but just kind of testing a breakout to the upside and giving it so much room right so much room for if markets were going to equity markets and just things got really bad from a macroeconomic perspective and things continue to the downside right so maybe, maybe markets are rallying, maybe equity markets are rallying, maybe there's some hope kind of being interjected into headlines, markets, everything's rallying, XRP having a good outcome, XRP pumping like crazy, outperforming things, and then there's kind of this final, just last bear market type of move. Well, look at XRP. XRP really outperforming in the bear market because of everything going on. This is extremely speculative, but it leaves so much room to the downside if this were to play out this way, right? But I really, I want to digress from that. And I just want to say, I mean, on the short term, we have to continue to watch what S&P 500 is doing, what the stock market is doing. 
because that is what is really, really guiding the ship. And when I, when I say the ship, I mean crypto prices. And that includes XRP right now. So keep in mind, XRP is at the, at the lower trend line area. We could, before even a rally or before a positive news for this case happens, we could get a break to the downside. And then we could start being, okay, we can start tracking, well, what if we get a, a pullback to this triangle? And that's what sets off the pullback is a, a positive case for Ripple in the SEC case, right? And then we're getting a break. So this could go all different ways. But my point is this, no matter if it's down first and then up or up, I think a $2 range in the, in the midterm is realistic for XRP. And that's right around a $100 billion market cap. Now on the short term, here is what's cool. We have this 50 day moving average crossing the 200. We just talked about it in the intro. Now, if we zoom out on the chart, I wanna just show you something. The last time that this happened was back here. And this was over a year ago in September, 2021. You can see this cross, this cross happening, the 50 day above the 200. This is when markets were kind of just, you know, they weren't parabolic going into the bull market doors. You know, if we look at Bitcoin right now, if we go back to September 2021, Bitcoin was kind of just getting ready to, to, to top out on the bull market, right? So this wasn't like the beginning when things were going crazy and popping off and we were entering the bull market. So this is what XRP was doing. It had this nice move to the upside and then it was kind of getting ready to fizzle out with the markets and that's, that's fine. But now what I want to say is we're not at the top of a bull market. That's not happening. We're, we're well within a bear market. So when you start getting 50-day moving averages crossing above a 200-day moving average in a bear market, that's when we start paying attention because it's the first sign of just consolidation. Even if there's more downside, we want to see these moving averages start touching again and squeezing together for consolidation, sideways or not. So we get that, that just move for the next bull run. So the 20, the 50 day moving above the 200 day. And here we are before uh, the second time ago that this happened, the 50 day above the 200 day, check it out. This was XRP and it just was getting ready to kind of go parabolic. And then before that, this is XRP 50 day above the 200, August, 2020, right before the bull market. So it's a really big move. It's a good move. It's not something that comes around so often, but certainly something to track right now in the shorter term. On the shorter term, in terms of support, just for anybody out there that wants to kind of track this, I am, is this. We have kind of this swing low to swing high, back down to a Fibonacci. And I would probably use this swing high since it's a little higher, but this is what the Fibonacci looks like. Swing high to swing low. And we have our Fibonacci pullback support right now, the 618 around 41 cents to the 786 around 37 cents. Again, XRP kind of having some cushion or some downside, right? This is almost 20%, right around 18% to the 786. It's a higher low area if these moving averages right here, uh, which are just below XRP, do not hold. So that's short term what I'd be watching on XRP. But everybody, so much going on. It's unbelievable. It, it's, it's hard to condense it. It's hard to bring it all together in one short video, but there's so much going on. And I think it's worth paying attention to, once again, whether you hold XRP or you don't, I think it's worth kind of rooting for them as we, we try and get some definitions. We try and get some guidance in terms of crypto as a whole. So we're going to continue tracking all of these things. Be very careful out there with all the speculation that is all over the place and just use, use some patience in these markets and sit back and really think about what's best for you. Don't listen to YouTubers, absorb the data, but think about what's best for you. I appreciate you cruising by. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.